Clash Royale. Welcome back, guys, to the SSL. We're in the midst of Dark versus Classic for the round of four, match number one. It's all tied up one to one, and as we expected, a very, very close series. Very close, very uh, strong individual performances by both players, yeah. mostly just because it's a 1v1 game, so all of their performances are individual. There but, you go, Rapid. You, you figured it out. You got it down. That's my expert analysis, guys. <laughs> uh, but what I meant there is that their individual characteristics are what are leading them here to the uh, yeah. to their victory. Dark likes to play aggressive, did it well, and then followed up with solid macro play. He's won SSL before, and that's one of the reasons why. He's got that all-around uh, uh, kind of uh, strategy. Uh, it's great at best of sevens, as absolutely. I said. You know, every, every map, there's going to be a new strategy, a new approach, mm -hmm. right? We're going into Frozen Temple for game number three. It's a two-player map. It's one of our smaller ones. Maybe we see more aggression out of Dark. Maybe we see, you know, uh, proxies are pretty common on this map as well. You see a lot of Dark Shrine proxies here, usually against Terran. But I don't know, maybe maybe Classic could mix it up too. Well, let's see if he can. Uh, we're about to get into game number three here, guys. So if you have not filled in your liquid bets yet, get out there and do it. Did mine before here, so I am good. And if you guys are good too, then make sure to stick around because we've got game number three coming up, Dark versus Classic on Frozen Temple. Now, if we go late enough in this series, we're gonna be seeing a few new maps, but before we get there, we've gotta get through some of our older ones. Frozen Temple uh, has been around for about as long as I can remember. So it's nice to see, uh, nice to see it standing the test of time. Yeah, so guys, we are gonna jump into game number three right now on Frozen Temple for this PBC of Classic versus Dark. Frozen Temple, one of our two-player maps. And up here in the top left, in the red, the Zerg player winning that last one. It is Dark. More fan comments this time from Shade, who's ironically a fan of Dark. Uh, Looks like he's calling Dark the legacy of the Emperor, even though he plays Zerg instead of Terran. <laughs> but uh, either way, uh, this is classic. SKT's Protoss player here tonight. Let's see what Kyoki95 has to say. I am watching from the arena, the and arena. I'm also com uh, commenting on the matches, so let's go. Multitasking, man. How does it work? <laughs> well, let's see what the opening builds are for both of our players here. Uh, early expands once again, so we're not one base in it, but it will be interesting to see what our uh, opening strats are. Dark, he knows when to hit that kill switch, uh, and he's done it many, many times. Did it in game number two. See if he wants to pull that out here on, like you said, a much smaller map, Frozen Temple. And uh, Classic sent a very, very early uh, probe, even to make sure that Dark was not going for, uh-oh, going for an early uh, hatchery. But guys, we are going to see some aggression mm. here, a very, very early road swarm from Dark. Uh, I want to see how many drones he goes up to. Usually you stop it around, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30, depending on how all all in you want to go. But no, make no mistake about it, this Roach Warren is Bro. gonna be put to what? use. <laughs> what? Here we go, it's no. gonna be, I think it's gonna be like seven or eight Roaches with Burrow, and he's just gonna use it to micro and save the Roaches because generally, you know, if the Protoss, we've been seeing Stargate Tech twice in a row here from Classic, so this is actually a really good read, but Classic, he goes for Robo first, and that may just save him in this game. It may very well. Uh, turns out it's very hard to micro <laughs> against immortal shots that are actually just so good. And if you go Disruptors with a Bay afterwards, then of course you can't really burrow your Roaches against that. But that tech is a long ways away, and he does need to scout this to know what's going on. Yeah, that he does. And as of yet, he has no idea. Uh, nothing on the other side of the map. There is, as I was saying, eight Roaches here. Even going to go for an Evo Chamber, so he might also wow. drop into the main. 
Oh my god. I, I'm just like so interested to see exactly how d hard Dark is going to commit to this because uh, this game is most likely not going to last very much longer. Now we saw the odd exception to that in game two where you all in super hard and the game does last much longer. So Dark capable of playing in both situations, but here comes out the little sentry that could to push you know, away this overlord. Classic is actually going to have just so much stuff to defend this with the Immortal popping out and all these gates. I think he was going for an Immortal all-in, but actually this might just save him. The Roaches are here at the front poking at this uh, at this Zealot here, and some of the Roaches do get in, but the first Immortal is out. What are these Roaches doing? All right, they were moving around a little bit, but here is this first Immortal, and this is going to be what really makes or breaks uh -huh. it, and now he reveals the Burrow. But with drones coming up in the back line, this isn't going to be a super, super all-in from Dark. Yeah, it's just some pretty heavy pressure early on in the game, you know? It's a very interesting idea, something definitely that you can do only on a map like this. Moving these Roaches forward now. I believe they can one-shot uh, workers with just, uh, just three, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but he's actually going to go for it. <laughs> oh no! The Artosis CS, the pylons in there, powering just about everything. Uh, if we can take that one down, pass it around, there's going to be a whole lot less gateways on the wall. Oh, and look at this. He's committing to the to the Cybernetics Core, but he, I don't think he's going to get it here. Not with the warp in. He has too many gateways, and even warping in some zealots just get well, right in there and do that DPS. here at all either. So. He gets one. He just wanted to snipe down that cyber core, and he's committing so much to doing it, but he's... Oh, he does get it with the other two roaches there on the right side, wow. so nicely done. The mind games. Able to still take it down, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, it will stop all of his stalker protect... Oh, wait, he's not doing that, but uh, in the end, it is still annoying. It's being rebuilt, uh, and this is actually kind of interesting to see from Dark, because that was what we've seen look like before a super hardcore all-in, but Dark's not committing to it. And Classic is in a, a very good spot, actually, where he he has so many uh, Immortals already made. He has three, and he has so many Gateways as well. I think he's gone up to six. Let me take a quick look. He has six Gateways, and Dark is stuck on Roach Tech. He doesn't even have Zergling speed. So even if he wanted to make a bunch of Zerglings to try to counter this composition, they're not going to have speed here for, for a bit. Yeah, in fact, he, uh, he went Roach, Roach Burrow, which is about as as unspeedy as possible. Uh, losing that drop overlord means that uh, the potential of having your base invaded there uh, is much lower uh, for Classic, unless Dark wants to commit to all of that all over again. And with a warp prism out, this means Classic starting to push out on the map. Dark doesn't even have an opportunity here to go for a counterattack. You know, I was thinking in Dark's position, what could he do to try to, you know, take some of the pressure off, but nice. he can't even do that. He's not even on, on the map. He's having Overlord sniped. Yep. Nice little micro there. And we will have Ravagers out here uh, for, for Dark, but I mean, Zergling Speed will just barely finish in time for this push to come in here. I actually thought Classic was going to push much more quickly, uh, but instead he is going to let that upgrade finish. And oh man, Dark might be in a little bit of trouble. Now he does have those three bases up that he needs, uh, but he's on par with wow, workers, which this. is never where you want to be as a Zerg. And man, this is actually some really cool play. This is really cute, actually. It's just such a good idea because you do cut down on the time. I guess he could have just gone to the left instead, but since he is kind of caught in the middle there, he does have to ferry his units over. Oh, he's going to come from two angles, actually. Yep, and that Zergling will scout it out as well. We'll see if these Ravagers make good use of those corrosive vials. They're coming down. They do actually hit a lot of those Immortals on the back line, but there might just be too much Protoss, all those Adepts, and even Zealots in the front line going to town. All the Immortals in the back are totally, totally protected, even if he takes out some of these units. As I said before, he's stuck on this weird just Roach Ling tech, and even though he has speed, uh, not much he can do here. Lots of Adepts and Zealots in the mix, as you were talking about. Great splitting there by Classic, except for that one, one lone Stalker, but there's just not enough Zerg here to survive. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be enough. Another big, big warp in of Adepts here. And the corrosive vials are not going to be enough. The drones are going to be pulled, and it looks like Classic is on his way to a 2-1 lead. We have the immortaliest of immortals there in the back, able to hit for free for so long, and GG. Dark, having some problems. Yeah, it was, a, it was a nice idea, and I don't think Classic, I, I'll, I'll stand by that, I don't think he knew what was coming. If he did, that's like a soul read of Dark. He's like, oh, I've seen him do this build on this map, I can just hard counter it. But what I think he was doing was going for an Immortal all-in. You know, just 
getting the robotics first and having it in the middle of your base so you can try to hide it away from those speed overlords if mm -hmm. Stark is playing, you know, standard. Yeah, and you just start with the Immortal as well to, to get out as many in a row and then you, the big gateway explosion. It looks like an Immortal all in. Uh, absolutely. And you can even see he positioned his sentries there out towards the edge of the base to try to push those overlords back away. Uh, while the drop did get in, not enough damage was really done. And like you said, when you prepare by having all those gateways just finishing as soon as Dark's aggression hits, and the Immortal coming out, it's like, well, what are you really going to do? And Dark, to his credit, did notice, hey, I'm not really going to be able to kill him with this, so let's try droning up in the background. But by then, it was just too late, too much army production there uh, for Classic, who will take a 2-1 advantage. Uh, here coming into game number four. Yeah, game number four is going to be on King Sejong Station, so another two-player map. And uh, a map that both these players should be very comfortable on. I mean, they've been around for quite a while. We used to uh, play on this map all the time in Heart of the Swarm. We're playing on it a lot here in Legacy of the Void as well. And uh, always produced very fun PvZ games. I wonder if Dark is going to continue with the aggression, maybe go for some backdoor shenanigans. It's possible. I mean, he's tried dropping a lot. I really think that this is sort of like the, the next level of evolution for a lot of teams, a lot of players starting to research ways to put on uh, early... Uh,